My name is Sean, and in today's video, I have the ultimate Zoom games library of all games you can play on Zoom with your family and your friends. This list of games includes everything except for games specifically for holidays or festivals. Basically, I have compiled all of my Zoom game videos of 2020 and put them into one video to be helpful to you, or at least I hope it's helpful to you. I am putting timestamps in the description box down below so that it makes it easy for you to find games that you are looking for that you want to reference back to you can quickly jump to that part of the video let's dive into these over 100 games so this first video was what started it all. It's my most popular video ever in the history of my channel for four years on YouTube. Yes, top 20 Zoom games for families. Whoa, when I made this video, I had absolutely no idea so many of you would watch, would watch this video. If I had, I might've put a little more makeup on or I don't know. This was a completely, totally different video for my channel. So sit back, enjoy these 20 game ideas. Here we go. Game number one is called Zoomed In. You are going to go ahead and pick some pictures of some animals, save them to your computer. You're going to screen share through Zoom. Yes, Zoom will let you screen share. Don't show the full picture right away. Go ahead and zoom in on the corner of the object of the picture and see if the other players can guess what the picture is. The longer it takes them to guess, the further you zoom the picture out until somebody has guessed it correctly. I did forget to tell you that these 20 ideas are great for families because there are options for families with younger children. There are options for families with grandparents. These games are geared for a span of age groups, so you'll need to pick the games that best suit the ages of the players on your Zoom call. All right. Game number two. Game number two is Inside Scavenger Hunt. Now this is one of the easier games to play. So you will name an object that is commonly found in the house. So say a box of cookies. All the players will go and find a box of cookies and whoever returns back with their cookies first is the winner of that round. So then you can have like a whole list of 20 or 30 objects that your friends and your family have to go and find and that is how you play an indoor scavenger hunt. I will leave a link to a Pinterest post of mine that gives you a short list of objects that you can use for this game. Game number three is animal charades. Each player will take turns picking an animal inside their head and then act out that animal without making any noises, without making any noises, and see which of the other players guesses the animal correctly. So it's regular, regular normal charades played online. Game number four is called What's That Sound? You can use sounds off of your computer, off of your phone, off of stuff that you found around your house, but make a funny sound. <laughs> where people cannot see the object and then the players will guess and whoever guesses the sound correctly wins the game. Game number five is called Storyteller. You're going to mute all the players except for yourself. You're going to begin with a short sentence, the beginning of the story, and then you will unmute the other players and they will take turns adding a sentence to that story until all the players have had a ch chance to say part of the story. So you're making a story together. Game number six is called Silly Faces. This one is great for younger children. So go ahead and say, all right, we're all going to make a silly face. And then you take a screenshot of everybody making that silly face. Everybody make a silly face with your tongue sticking out. Everybody make a silly, silly face touching your finger to your nose. With your eyes wide open. Everybody show how far you can stick out your tongue. Kissy face. Who can lick their elbow? Game number seven is the singing whisper challenge. I saw this on the Tonight Show. I didn't actually click on the video, but it sounded like a great idea. So to play the singing whisper challenge, you will mute the person that is starting off the game, the it person, you will mute them and they will pick a song and they have to sing that song and dance to that song and everybody else has to guess. Game number eight is called draw it. Each player takes a turn picking an animal and drawing it and whoever guesses before they finish the completed project, the completed work of art is the winner. Game number nine is called I Spy. Go ahead and designate one person as it. That person will look through the backgrounds of all the other players and say, hey, 
I spy something red. They could name a color or I spy a circle. They could name an, a shape. All the other players have to guess and each time nobody guesses the object that they spy correctly, then you add on a new clue or a new hint to help the team to come up with what they have spied. Game number 10 is Quarantine Would You Rather. I played this on a live stream a couple weeks ago. I will link that right up here in the cards for you to watch. It has lots of questions on how to play Would You Rather. So go check that out. Go watch the video after this one. Game number 11 is Two Truths and a Lie. Each player will tell two true things about themselves and one lie. So you'll take turns and all the other players, they have to guess which one is the lie. Game number 12 is called Read My Lips. One player texts another player a phrase. That player then says the phrase to the group without making a sound. The other players have to guess that phrase. Game number 13 is great for preschoolers. You can play Simon Says. Simon Says. Everybody loves old school Simon Says. Simon Says, touch your head. Simon Says, touch your nose, touch your ears. Oops, Simon, Simon did not say, touch your ears, you're out. That's how you play Simon Says. Game number 14 is rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, you can play rock, paper, scissors online. I know. Who would have thought? It's real easy. You can do this. Just gotta be visual. Rock, paper, scissors, classic game. Game number 15 is the ABC game. I'm going on a beach trip and I'm taking an apple. And the next player has to come up with something else that starts with B. So they say, I'm going on a beach trip. I'm taking an apple and a beach blanket. And then you go through the whole alphabet until someone cannot come up with an object to name with the letter in the alphabet and then they are out. Game number 16 is a memory game. You're gonna need a cookie sheet for this and your magnets off your refrigerator. Go get those, go get those right now. Put your magnets, they will stick right onto that cookie sheet. Give all the players 30 seconds to look at your magnet and then take one away. And players have to guess, which magnet is missing? What did it look like? I wonder, can we remember what was actually on this cookie sheet? On this cookie sheet? <laughs> on this cookie sheet. Game number 17, Mad Lib. I'll leave a link in the description box down below of a free site, not my own, somebody else's, of some Mad Libs stories and just fill out a Mad Libs story together. Number 19 is a talent show. But don't do any prep. I mean, you could. You could do a talent show and have everybody prepare. I think, weren't there some celebrities that recently did this? Or you could do a talent show on the spot, which leads to some very interesting, interesting talents when people have to come up with a talent on the spot. I mean, like, one of my talents is I can bend my thumb behind my finger. Weird, I know, but that's one of my talents. What is one of your talents? And game number 20. Can you believe it? We're at the end of this video. I really hope that I have lifted your spirits through this video and given you guys some great ideas to have fun with your friends and family. Even though you can't see them in person, this world is going to get better. This virus will end. It will not last forever. We can save lives by staying home and playing with our friends and our family online through an app such as Zoom. This isn't sponsored. I don't, I did not know. They don't even know I'm doing this video. All right, game number 20. Name that emoji. Why did I just sing it? That was weird. Feeling sassy. Name that emoji. Preload some emojis onto your computer so that you can screen share them and everybody has to caption that emoji. Put up some well-known emojis that everybody knows, you know, laughing, crying face, uh, tears pouring down, heart emoji, and then give them some unusual ones like this one here or this one. What, what what are those? I don't know. Let me know in the description box down below. This Thanks. next set of games is from a follow-up video where I was like, hey, you guys really enjoyed the first one. I probably should make a couple more. <laughs> so that's what this video is. It is more Zoom games for families. It's is called emoji lineup this game is best played on your phone so the leader will type in five random emojis like these right here everybody will try to type in the same exact five emojis and whoever does this the fastest is the winner the second game is called words within words the leader will type a word in and everybody has to try and find the most number of words within that word does that make sense let me give you an example Here's the word and here are some word options that can be made from that word. You could also play this game with a phrase like this one here. 
But the trick is you only have one minute to type in as many words that you can find. Did you know that Zoom has a whiteboard feature? You can play games that require all the players to contribute and write things on the whiteboard. So tic-tac-toe is a fabulous option to play, especially if you're Zooming your grandma online. You can do tic-tac-toe. The next game is called Famous for Two Minutes. <laughs> You only have two minutes to be famous. Have all of your Zoom players submit some questions and pick one person to be famous for two minutes and then everybody gets to ask questions to that one player who's famous for two minutes. For example, when was the last time you ate bugles? No, really, when was the last time you ate bugles? They're pretty salty. <laughs> Who are you wearing? Editing Sean here. I am wearing quarantine fashion brought to you by Barefoot Dreams, American Eagle, and Lululemon. <laughs> Did you know that you can play Guess Who online on Zoom? And I'm not talking about downloading some game, paying some price. No, I'm talking about old school Guess Who. If all the players on your call have the Guess Who game, then this works perfectly for online playing. The next game is called Mind Meld. I know, it sounds very brainy and maybe a little superhero sci-fi action. Mind Meld. So two players will count down, three, two, one, and then try to say the exact same word at the same time. So I was gonna get my husband to help out with this demonstration, but he's with my toddler and they're in the bathroom and I have no clue what is happening. I'm going to split the screen and I will be playing two different people at the same time. Let's see how this goes. All right, go. Three, three two, two, one. One, mayonnaise. Then the player who wins that round turns to the next player. Three, three two, two, one. One, hot dog. hot dog. This is a great game to play with lots of people on your Zoom call. Oh. Farkle is another game that everybody can play online. All you need to make sure is that every player has six dice. Dice or die? Die. Die is one. Dice is more than one. Make sure you have six dice and you're all set to play Farkle. I will link instructions on how to play Farkle in the description box down below. Another game to play online is matching card game. Now we have this really cute little matching card game set right here. Everybody can play, but only one person needs to have this game. I'm gonna insert some footage right now of how to set up a second camera angle because you are gonna need to do that so that every player on your Zoom call can see the memory card setup. This is how you set it up, using simple grocery items that you can find in your pantry and your cell phone, and then you play on your laptop. Boggle! Again, you're gonna need the setup that I just showed you in the last game option. You guys know how to play Boggle, right? I will leave a Boggle board down in the description box that you can order off of Amazon. We love Boggle at home. Don't forget, if you missed the very first Zoom games, I will link in a card right up here for you to watch. But the last game is Scategories. You guys know how to play this? Maybe, maybe. You come up with a category, say fruits, and everybody has to name a fruit until nobody can name any more fruits. And you can divide players up into teams or you can play one-on-one, -on -one, keep a score. I will leave a Pinterest post in the description box down below of some category, category options for you to play this game online. Let me know in the comment section down below what are your favorite Zoom games to play. I Woo! That's a lot of Zoom games, but you know what? I've got 25 more for you. Yes, this is the second most popular video in the history of my channel. Wow, I just, we just, there's just so much fun to be had on Zoom. Let's watch it together. Here we go. The first game is a freeze dance party. This is something everybody can play together at the same time. You play some music. When the music stops, everybody freezes in place. Call. This is another game that everybody can play at the same time, but you're going to need to do just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit of prep work beforehand. Assign a motion to an animal. For an elephant, it could be the elephant motion. For a bunny rabbit, it could be. But make sure all of your players know the motions, know the animal, and then you're gonna call out the animal and everybody has to do the motion at the same time. Game number three is another game that you can play everybody at the same time. It is throwing an imaginary ball. Yes, you can play a game of catch 
online <laughs> with everybody. But it is gonna take some teamwork and some cooperation and some coordinating. So you take the ball and you pass it. You pass it on. So have everybody either pass to the right or pass to the left or pass up or pass down. You can even have people call out the names of their friends as they're passing the ball. Johnny, Sue, Minori. All right, it's time for a pro tip. If in the midst of all these games, your players, you feel like they need a hug and you can't give them one, let's go in for a virtual hug. Everybody now. So when you go for a virtual hug, everybody got to make sure your hands are off screen so that it looks like you're forming one giant hug circle with everybody hugging. Oh, virtual hug, everybody, virtual hug. All right, moving on to the next game. The next game is called Alphabet Four Square. This is a game that everybody can play at the same time. You are either going to need to use the whiteboard feature in Zoom, or you can do this with paper and pencils, markers, crayons at home with everybody. Go ahead and draw a square with four quadrants, and in those quadrants, you are going to name name, place, animal, and thing. Set a timer for about 10, 15 seconds. Kind of put your, you can use your finger on the screen and kind of go around as the clock is ticking like this. And when the, when the timer goes off, whichever quadrant your finger is touching, your students then either have to draw or write a name, place, animal, or thing. And they can do this on their own Zoom whiteboard or they can do it just paper and pencil and everybody shows what they drew or wrote. For example, for the letter M, they might draw mom or mountain or mouse. Game number five is the musical stop. Okay, this is a game that is a physical activity. Get them up and moving. Everybody can play at the same time. Grab a screenshot of a piece of music and share it on your screen. You'll need to assign different actions for the different type notes. So for a staccato, you could have players jump up and down. <laughs> For quarter notes, you could have them stomp like an elephant. Whole notes that you have to hold for a really long time, you could have them make a circle to get their arms moving. Game number six is another physical movement game. It's called Roll the Dice, Let's Get Moving. As a leader, you are going to need a die. I'll pop up a Pinterest post that I found right here for you to look at, and I'll link it in the description box down below if you want to use this picture as well. Do you remember the way we'd have like pep rallies in high school and somebody would walk around with their arms up and everybody would go like this and whole crowds of people and it would look like the crowd was in this just wave of people. Yeah, you can do that online. <laughs> this is fun for a large group of people. Start in the upper left hand corner, wherever you want and say, all right, everybody, we're just gonna go through and one after the other, raise their arms and let's see if we can all get together. It may take a couple of tries, teamwork, teamwork. Game number eight is called Movement Memory. Yes, this is another physical activity game, team building game. Pick one player to go first. They will create a movement. Everybody else has to copy that movement. They pick another person and that person creates a secondary movement, but also does the first movement. So that person will go and then they will add their own second movement. Woo! Then they will pick the next person, that person, so on and so forth until somebody can't remember a movement and then the game is over. Game number nine is called Silent Mirror. You're going to need a cell phone for this because you're gonna to need to text a person without everybody else seeing. You're gonna text a person and tell them that they are gonna be the silent mirror, okay? And then on go, <laughs> you'll say, okay, go. And everybody else has to figure out who the silent mirror is. So the silent mirror will be doing some actions. And then when somebody figures out who is doing the action, everybody else has to mimic that person and do the action until everybody is involved in doing the action. Game number 10 is called, where am I? No, really, where am I? I'm filming this, but I haven't inserted the background yet or changed the background on my picture. So I'm wondering, where am I? Tell me in the comment section down below because I don't know. <laughs> this is a great game for if you like to teach geography or you just want to have fun with your family and look back on some memories of trips you have taken. So you change your zoom background using the background zoom feature. It's very quick, just little click of a button. You can upload pictures into Zoom and use it as your background. You know what? I'm going to leave you some free Zoom backgrounds. I'll leave them linked in the description box down below. It'll send you to my website. They're free. Won't cost anything. You can just upload them. 
and use them as your background and your players will guess where in the world are you? Number 11 is go find something. I know that you all have already been playing this game because some of you have told me that's where I got this idea. Go find something. So you tell your players, hey, go find something pink. This gets people up and moving and it also gets people playing a game at the same time. You can say, go find something plastic. Go find something square. possibilities are endless with this game. Number 12 is clapping rhythms. I don't know about you, but we used to do these anytime the teacher needed to get our attention. We would do, she would do clapping rhythms. So you clap and everybody clap and it gets your arms moving and it gets everybody playing at the same time. This would be great kind of breaking up some boredom. Enough. Okay, we're moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Number 13 is show and tell. What kid doesn't love show and tell? Honestly, what adults, we as adults, we love show and tell too, right? We love telling everybody we got a new car and we love showing it off. We love, we bought a new house. We want to have our friends over and having a new house. We can't do that, can we? We can't have our friends over. No, we're still practicing social distancing. Well, most of us are. Some of us aren't. If they've got something new or they just want to show their treasured possession, have each player take a turn and show something that they love. You might might want to take advantage of the mute feature on Zoom just in case someone gets a little long-winded and goes past timing. Just 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 click that little click click that little mute button. What you snacking? All right, who's been eating a lot of snacks during this quarantine? Yes. been trying out some new snacks, eating some old snacks, healthy snacks, non-healthy snacks, but I have a healthy snack game for you. It's called What You Snacking, and it is available for only $2. It's a digital download. You get all the slides for this game. You can load it up into PowerPoint presentation. You can share your screen on Zoom. You can do with it however you like. You'll see an image like this right here. You don't know what it is, and then you'll see a slide oh, that shows your players what the snack is. This is the healthy option. I thought, you know, your moms, your parents, your teachers, you might not appreciate the unhealthy snacks, but I can make that game if you would like. Let me know in the description down below. What you snacking? That was weird. That was weird, right? Was that cringy? Was that cringy? Okay. Moving on. It's time for another pro, pro tip. tip. If you normally reward your students with stickers, and I reward my toddler with stickers when she goes potty, you can still reward your students with stickers. Just stick them on your face. You look funny, you look silly. So if you have a game and you need to hand out rewards and you don't know how to do that, just stick stickers on your face. Game number 15 is called Name a Country. You're going to need a map for this. Hold up the map. The first player names a country. The second player has to name a country with the last letter of the country just named. Did you get that? Game number 16 is Taboo. Use the whiteboard feature on Zoom. I will leave some instructions on how to play Taboo in the description box down below. Dots and boxes. Do you guys remember playing this in the pews at church? Was that just me? I used to play it with my siblings. <laughs> you can play this online. This is great for a one-on-one -on -one game with your grandma, with your mom, with your dad, with your son. Okay, it's a one-on-one -on -one game, people. <laughs> Use the drawing feature on Zoom to create your dot. One person makes a connection. The last person to connect the dot into a square gets to color that in or write their initial in the little box. And whoever has the most boxes after all the, the dots have been connected is the winner. I have a friend who has created a unique I Spy game and I'm pretty sure she has it on PowerPoint and slides that you can download. And I'm going to place a link down below. It's great for larger groups to spy different objects. It's kind of like the old school paper form, but on screen. I just thought you would really like this game and to check it out. So I will leave a link to that I Spy game and her website in the description box down below. It's pro tip time, it's pro tip time. So you're noticing your players, if you're teachers or church leaders or even family members, if you're noticing that your kids are bored on screen or, or grandpa is fast asleep, you just make a silly face. Just make a silly face on screen to kind of wake them up. The other thing you can do to wake your Zoom call up is just go really close to the screen. Just really close, you know, just really, really close get their attention, you know, and then pop back. <laughs> Game number 19, activity 
activity. I should say activity. Activity 19 is coloring sheets. Did you know you can color on the Zoom app together and you can all color to, you can all color together. I'm going to show you a feature right here right now of how you can color, but you'll just take any color sheet, free color sheet off of the internet, load it up and then use this feature right here to color together and everybody can do that. There's a setting in Zoom where everybody can contribute to your screen. So you can color together. Who doesn't love coloring? This next game is called What's the Theme? You're going to need to mute the it person, one player, and then instruct everybody else say, we're gonna pick a theme and everybody has to say words that are only related to this theme. And then we'll unmute the person and they have to guess what the theme is. So for example, our theme is gonna be Disney. So you can say any words related to Disney and see if the person can, can figure it out. So you could do, you know, the names of Disney movies, the names of Disney characters, as long as everybody is naming something Disney related and when they guess it, then they choose another person to be it. Then you mute that person and you pick a, a new theme. So it could be like a letter or you could name things that are all a certain color. The categories and possibilities, again, are endless. So get creative, get creative with your theme. Game number 21 is called Draw It. Now I've done this game many times on my channel. Okay, many, I mean like two or three times where you take a paper plate and you put it on your head and you draw something related to a theme. So I've done Christmas themes, we've done Easter, we've done Frozen themes. Players don't have paper plates at their house. You can just use a plain piece of paper and tell everybody, say, hey, everybody draw an animal, everybody draw an elephant on the top of your head, or everybody draw a beach scenery and give them 30 seconds, 15 seconds, and then everybody shows their picture of what they drew. And you could award prizes. Don't forget that pro tip about stickers on your face for the winner. The next game is called Picture Story. You're going to need one unique picture for every player. So you're gonna to need to know how many players ahead of time that you have. And you need a wide variety of just random pictures. I love going to unsplash.com and getting free pictures there because you can use them anywhere. Now you're going to build a story based off those pictures. You will start out showing your picture and say, once upon a time, a princess was visiting a sandy beach. Then the next player will take their picture and create the next line of the story. The princess found a horse and became friends with a horse named Alfred. <laughs> so then you create a whole unique story around pictures. By not being able to see our loved ones in person, we sometimes don't get to hear the success stories, especially with children. They aren't getting the little affirmations that they need at school anymore or around their friends. So this is a perfect time to have an activity called success sticker. So you're going to need some post-it notes for this game. Go ahead and ask your Zoom players to tell you one thing that they have been successful at while home during this lockdown. Write that thing on a sticker, post it to your face, to your chest, to your shoulders, where everybody can see it and have just a wall of success stickers and affirmations and positivity. It's time for my last pro tip, but this isn't the end of the game, so we still have a few more games to do, but my pro tip is to have a themed Zoom call. So instead of just having everybody regularly show up however they will, you could say everybody wear a silly hat, everybody wear a certain specific color, everybody wear, if you're from a school, you could say everybody wear your spirit wear that you would normally wear at school. Pick a specific theme for your Zoom call to make it a little more fun and entertaining. We are down to the last two games. Name that tune. This is always a popular one. Just go ahead and hum, hum a tune and everybody guesses what it is. And it's even more fun when you have bad singers in the group who can't carry a tune and it makes it really challenging to figure out what it is. Can you guess this tune? I'm not that great at music. <laughs> That was horribly bad, so let me know in the comment section, could you figure out what that was? And our final game is called Goats in the Grass. So the way you play this game is you have to say an animal and a place. And so everybody takes turns going through the alphabet. So you would say, you start off with the letter A and you would say ants in Antarctica. The next person would be the letter B, bees in Bali. And you go through the alphabet and if somebody hesitates and stutters, they are out. They're out of the game, they lose the game. And you try to get through the whole alphabet saying an animal and a place. If All right, you guys getting bored? <laughs> I hope not. You guys getting tired of watching all these 
Zoom games. It's like a marathon, a marathon of fun. This next one is five Zoom games to play on your phone because up till now, I had just been putting Zoom games out for the computer and I'd had a couple questions from you all about what games work specifically with phones because there are some limitations like, you know, gallery view only shows four people at a time. I don't know how that's gallery view. Whereas your computer will show up to 49 players at one time. That's a big difference. So here are five Zoom games that are fun to play on your phone. Game number one is Would You Rather Quarantine Edition. Many of you have seen me play this game on my live stream that I did about a month ago. Who would you rather be quarantined with? Bigfoot? or a unicorn. I'm gonna write my answer down, unicorn. And I will link that in a card right up here for you to watch. It has all the questions you are going to need to play this game. Participants will ask, would you rather do this or would you rather do that? Would you rather eat poop flavored chocolate or chocolate flavored poop? Depending on the number of players you have, everybody can either say their guess out loud or Zoom on your phone has this nifty feature with clapping hand emojis and a thumb up emoji. Whoever picks option one, use the clapping hands emoji and whoever picks option two, use the thumbs up emoji. That way, if you have a lot of players, you don't get all of that noise. You can also use the chat feature on Zoom to type in answers. Everybody is a winner in this game. Game number two is Emoji Movie. So you, as the host of the Zoom playing game party, pick some emojis that represent some movies like this right here. Can you guess what movie this is? Put your answer down below, giving you some time. All right, here it is. Did you get it correct? But you wanna have a lot of these and you can keep score. Again, players can use the chat feature to type in their answers. Whoever gets the most movies correct is the winner. Game number three is Where Am I? This game takes advantage of changing the virtual background that Zoom on your phone will allow you to do. Go ahead and preload some backgrounds into your phone so that you can save them. If you wanna know how to do that, I have a tutorial. I'll post it right here for you to watch after this video, but you'll want to pick a bunch of pictures that are different places around the world and change your background. Players will either speak out loud or use the chat feature to guess where in the world you are. The player who gets the most correct is the winner. Moving on to the next game. Game number four is Zoomed In. This is a great game to play on your phone. I'm going to specifically give you some tips for an iPhone, the best way to do this. Afterwards, I will give you one tip for how you can play this on an Android because I'm not familiar with Android. For Zoomed In, you're going to go to your iMovie app. Go ahead and preload some pictures into your iMovie app and create a little iMovie. It will let you zoom in and zoom out. I am creating a tutorial for this. If it's already up, I will post it in the description box down below. If it's not there, it is coming because I am filming both at the same time. If you don't have an iPhone or that seems a little too complicated for you to create a little movie through iMovie and use the share your screen feature in Zoom, then you'll need to take smaller pictures of larger pictures and have say three separate images for the different pictures already preloaded into your phone so that when you share your screen you'll share one picture after another after another rather than playing a little movie with that cool zoomed in effect. Moving on to game number five. Game number five is called What's on Your Face. This is perfect for a girl's night or a boy's night. I do not discriminate on this channel. You're going to ask all of your participants to come with a full face of makeup and also bring their products that they used on their face with them. Take turns guessing what people are wearing on their face. You can say, hey, all right, everybody guess. It's time to guess Sean's lipstick. What is she wearing? What brand is she wearing? And see if anybody can guess. This is a perfect game for the makeup lovers just to laugh and see what, what is everybody wearing on their face. The winner is determined by whoever gets the most makeup brands correct. Now this next one I filmed right before Father's Day and I thought, well, you know, we're not going to be seeing our dads in person, so let's meet them on Zoom. These are five fun games for dads, but really they're fun for everybody, <laughs> not just 
dads. The first Zoom game is called Name That Tool. So go grab some random tools from your garage and see if players can guess the tool that you're holding up. I got this one, I got this one. Depending on the age of your player, it depends on how easy or how difficult this game can be. I would love for you to consider subscribing to this channel and being a part of this community of teachers and families and church leaders. Moving on to game number two. Game number two is dad charades. So have a list of famous dads from TV shows, movies, books, and then act them out. Could you guess that famous dad? Let me know in the comment section down below. Who was I trying to be? <laughs> game number three is a game created by a friend of mine who owns Deeper Kidman. I will put all of the information down below, but it is this cool beard game. Can you guess whether the dad has a beard on underneath the clip art beard? I mean, it's genius. This is perfect on-screen game. She has all of the images and everything ready to go. I will put a link to this game in the description box down below. Game number four is create a sport trivia game with Trivia Maker. So I recently did a sponsored video with Trivia Maker explaining all about how you can create your own trivia game. So if your dad's a sports fanatic, cars fanatic, life fanatic, book fanatic, whatever it is, you can create a game for that on Trivia Maker. Again, I'll post links to Trivia Maker in the description box down below. They have free versions as well as a paid version. This video is not sponsored by them. No, I just really like them. Game number five is to throw a Zoom minute to win it party for your dad. You can do all sorts of minute to win it games. I have a lot of minute to win it ideas. <laughs> I'll post a link right up here if you want to click on that playlist. Now, on my channel, you all love Minute to Win It games. I mean, really, who doesn't love Minute to Win It games? It's all about the competition. So I've got here some five Minute to Win It Zoom games that I did as a collab with Everything Aja. If you haven't been watching Aja's channel called Everything Aja, where have you been? She's awesome, she's energetic just like I am. We have laughs together someday. I hope to meet her in person. <laughs> So if you want some more ideas, this was a collab we did. So go watch her Minute to Win It games. Honestly, she has a lot of Zoom games over on her channel, so I highly recommend it. I will link her channel in the description box down below. The first game is a dice stacking game. How many die can you stack in one minute? Of course, you're gonna need to make sure that all your players have a bunch of die. They're super easy to order and cheap off of Amazon. I'll post a link to the ones that I bought in the description box down below. Set a timer for one minute and have your players stack up their die and whoever gets it first, give them a big thumbs up or hey, I won. Moving on to game number two. Game number two is the paper plate game. Most people have paper plates around their house and a writing utensil, pen, marker, crayon. Put the paper plate on your head and see who can draw the best bicycle in one minute. Yes, you can change whatever it is they draw. It could be a birthday cake, it could be a car, it could be Snoopy, whatever it is. Have them draw something, everybody the same thing, and whoever does it the best looking, not the fastest, but the best looking in one minute is the winner. For game number three, you are going to need a book Yes, a simple book. Everybody has books lying around. Now's a great time to see if you can balance that book on top of your head. Whoever can balance it for the full one minute or the longest in a minute's time is the winner. If you need to make this extra challenging, if everybody's good, all your players are excellent book balancers, then see if they can do two books. Game number four. Ugh. Game number four is words within words. I created a little game that you can just go ahead and play on screen that has all the words and slides all ready to go. You can just share your screen in Zoom. Everybody can play along. I'll post a link to that words within words game right here for you to click on. I also have this available to purchase for only $2 on my website if you want to download the individual JPEG images of this game. 
The way you play is a, I show a word up on the screen and everybody takes a pencil and their paper and writes down as many words that they see within the one word and however many words they can come up with in one minute determines the winner of the game. Before I talk about game number five, I would love for you to consider subscribing to my channel and joining this amazing community of families, teachers, and church leaders, all looking to connect with their loved ones through fun and games. If that sounds like you, hit that subscribe button down below, ring that little bell to receive all notifications, and let me know in the comment section down below. Just say hi. Say hi, Sean. I absolutely love getting comments from you all, and I respond to them all as well because it brings me joy to hear from you. All right, let's talk about our last game. Game number five is find it. Prepare a list of objects ahead of time and see how many objects players can find within the one room that they're zooming in, <laughs> in one minute. Whoever finds the most objects from your list in one minute's time is the winner. I began receiving some questions from you all saying, hey, a lot of your games seem to be geared to just families, but what about large groups? What about classrooms? I have a lot of church groups that watch my channel. Some of you may or may not know that. And so I had churches reaching out to me saying, hey, we need some Zoom game ideas for a large amount of people, kids, teenagers, adults. What do you have for us? So I came up with these 20 Zoom games. Here we go. Game number one is called Extreme Foods. I found this game idea on MaryHannahWilson.com. I will post her website in the description box down below. If you don't know where the description box is, it's, um, if you're on your phone, it is the little gray arrow somewhere over here. You click on it and a drop down box opens. I get questions about that all the time. If you're on your desktop, there should be a read more that you click on to expand all the show notes in a YouTube video. So in this version of the spoons game, everyone has their own spoon and their own deck of cards. Each player shuffles their own deck and deals themselves four cards. Now the goal is to get a four of a kind in your hand. When the game begins, players should take the top card from their own deck and either keep or discard it. If they keep it, they should discard a different card so only four remain in their hand. Now players continue in this manner until they have a four of a kind. Then they take the spoon next to them, hold it up to their nose so other players can see it via video chat. And as soon as someone gets a four of a kind or notices someone else holding a spoon, they should grab their spoon. The last person to grab a spoon receives a letter in the word spoon, S-P-O-O-N. The first person to spell spoon is the Loser. Game number two is called Scars and Stories. The object of the game is to show a scar and tell a story. It doesn't have to be the correct story. It could be a lie of a story. <laughs> Everybody else on your Zoom call then has to guess whether or not your scar story is the truth or a lie. I have a scar right here. Yeah, you can't see it, but it's right here. This is a weird angle. This is a weird camera angle. You're seeing my white leg. And it's from climbing underneath a barbed wire fence when I was in third grade. Let me know in the comment section down below. Is that a truth or is it a lie? Game number three is truth or dare. Yes, a classic teenage game. <laughs> there are family friendly truth or dare questions that I am going to leave a link to in the description box down below because this game, believe it or not, can be a very fun family friendly. The next game is called Add a Letter. The first player says any letter in the alphabet. The next player adds a letter either to the beginning of the word or the end of the word to create a new word. You continue playing until someone can't come up with a word. Game number five is called Show Us Your Fridge. Players who wish to participate in this game will show their fridge. So you might want to play this on your phone rather than desktop. You will show all of your Zoom friends and family what is in your fridge. One person, pick any person you want, gets to pick three items out of your fridge that you have to mix together and then eat. Gross, this would be a great game for teenagers or just weird adults like myself. It's completely disgusting, but hilarious. Game number six is called The Name Game. Everyone needs 
to select the name of a person, fictional or real, famous people usually work, and then text it to the Game Master. The Game Master will read all of them off and all the participants, all the players, try to remember the name. You go around and everyone gets a turn to guess who picked what name. You get one guess per turn. If you guess someone correctly, they are on your team. The goal is to get everybody on your team. Game number seven is a list of games that are great for groups using a Jackbox TV. This is a quick list of family-friendly games that you can play on Jackbox. Fibbage, Drawful 2, Whiplash 2, Gespinage, TKO. Game idea number eight that's great for groups is a company called Trivia Maker. Now I did post a sponsored video all about Trivia Maker, but basically you can make your own Wheel of Fortune style games, Trivia, Jeopardy, they have a lot of options that are free as well as a paid version. I will post a link to that video right up here if you want to go check out Trivia Maker. Game number nine is Superhero, quick. You have one minute to gather things around your house to turn yourself into a superhero. Everyone has to guess what superhero are you and maybe what superpower you have. Game number 10 is the great toilet paper race. Now don't tell players ahead of time that you're playing this game. When you say go, players have to race, grab three rolls of toilet paper from their house, and whoever stacks them on their head the fastest is the winner. The next game is called Mask versus Mask. This is another superhero game of who would win in a fight mashup. So you have maybe Superman versus Batman. Classic mashup in a fight. Who would win? Have players do a thumbs up if Superman would win and a thumbs down if Batman would win. So it's kind of a this or that. Tally up the votes to see who would win in a superhero mask versus mask fight. Yes, I know Superman does not wear a mask. It's just the name of the game. Calm down. Game number 12 is called Rainbow Hunt. This game is perfect for preschoolers because I know some of you all are looking for games for preschoolers and when to include a couple in this video. Read a book about colors like this one here. Then instruct children to go and find you an object featuring a specific color. So this is a great game to teach preschoolers their colors in a fun way. Game number 13 is called Good Morning Judge. Some of you may remember that playing this when you were in school. One person puts their head down. A second person disguises their voice and says, have the judge look up and try to guess within three guesses which player spoke. If the judge guesses the player correctly, then that player gets to become the next judge. If the judge guesses incorrectly after three guesses, then they have to be the judge again. Game number 14 is called Disney Dress Up. Give players five minutes or less, depending on the age of the child, to run and search and find things around their house to dress up like a Disney character. It could be a princess, could be an animal, whatever they wanna be, they come back, everybody has to guess which Disney character every player is. Then you could vote who came up with the best costume. The next game is called don't eat peat. Every player will need a bag of candy or a bag of cereal and a blank calendar page. Hold on, I think I got one of those. I think I have one of those. <laughs> okay, I found it. Make sure everybody has the same calendar month because you know, some months have more days than others. First player puts one piece of candy on every square, then puts their head down. All other players must decide in the chat one specific day to label as Pete. The player then sits up and begins eating the candy. If the player picks up Pete, everyone yells, don't eat Pete, and then it becomes the next player's turn. The winner is determined by who eats the most candy. The next game is called Race the Roof. Let me give you instructions about this game. Every player is going to need one die, one writing utensil, and one piece of paper. Share the instructional sheet on screen. First, to raise the roof of the house wins the game. 
Winner puts the picture of their house up to the screen when finished and shows everybody. Roll a one equals the house frame without the roof. Roll a two is two windows, three is a door, four is four people, five is a fence, six is the extended box of the house. If you roll two sixes, then you get the roof. The catch is you must build your house in order from one to six. First to raise the roof wins the game. The next game is called Twisted Rock, Paper, Scissors. One person is chosen as the leader and all the other players have to follow the motions of the leader. If you get the motion incorrect, then you are out of the game and must turn off the video of the screen. Don't don't leave the chat. Just make it so nobody can see you so you get a, like a blank screen. That way you know who the winner is at the end of the game. They'll be the only one plus the leader that can be seen on screen. What is that? That's not a thing. That's, what is this? Claw hand is not part of rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> the next game is called One Minute Please. Depending on the size of your group, you can play this all together or you can break up into individual small groups. The goal of the game is to talk for one minute on one specific subject. You pick and announce a topic and a member of the group is randomly selected to talk for one minute. Set a timer for one minute and see how long that person can talk before drying up on the subject. Really try to think out of the box for subjects to talk about that are very random. So here, here is an example. Random topic, rock lobsters. And talk about it for one minute, go. Rock lobsters have hard shell. They live in coastal environments. One time I played a game called Ball and Dash with my family and it featured a rock lobster and, and... Yeah, I would lose this game. I don't know much about rock lobsters, so really think out of the box when picking a topic. The next game is called Can I Rewear That? <laughs> Pick an article of clothing and a messy factor and then players will vote on either thumbs up, yes, you can rewear that, or thumbs down, no, you can't rewear that. Tally up the results and see what the collective response is for the groups. I'm gonna give you two things and you guys can vote down below. Can I rewear it? A sock that has a tiny bit of bird poop on it. Can I rewear it? A white t-shirt with grass stains. Can I rewear it? Vote down below. The next game is called Wink. This is me trying to wink. I cannot wink. What is that? I don't know. Wink Assassin. Wink Assassin is a game of guessing and acting. Put on your actor's hat. You don't need anything to play this game. Players must convince all the other players that they are not the assassin. One player is the assassin and must finish off the other players before getting caught and identified as the assassin. The assassin privately messages the victim a wink emoji. When a user gets this message, they must tragically die on screen and then turn off their video feed on the Zoom call. The players then vote who they believe the assassin is. So take turns. The assassin will continuously pick someone that they will message and after every death, then all the other players and then vote. The player with the most votes gets kicked off. The game continues until the assassin is caught. The next game is called Freeze Dance. You all know how to play this game, right? You all know how to play this game. Play this game with me. Do a dance to the music, to the music. And we stop, everybody has to freeze in place. Don't move, don't breathe. To put a little spin on the freeze dance, you can distinguish a game. So as people play, you can say, hey, do the Macarena until the, the music stops. So, was that the Macarena? Now, people are still having babies <laughs> during this pandemic. <laughs> And a popular thing, especially in the United States, I don't know about other parts of the world, but here in the United States, baby showers are of utmost importance to having a baby. And mothers were not getting together in person with their friends and we still want them to have baby showers. So I came up with these fun baby shower games specifically for video conferencing apps. Let's watch it now. The first baby shower game idea I have for you is called Emoji Baby Books. 
You know how there are famous baby books that everybody gives the baby showers. If you're using Zoom on your phone, this is a little bit easier because you can just type in your own emojis straight into the chat using the emojis that are available on your phone. You can type in some emojis like this here and then ask your guest to guess what baby book it is. Can you guess? Can you guess what baby book is in emojis here? So put together a list of famous baby books, assign three to five emojis per book. That way it is all ready for your guests to play the emoji baby game. The second baby shower idea is to create a baby trivia game using Trivia Maker. I know I talk about Trivia Maker a lot on this channel, but it's because I genuinely love the company. Being able to create my own trivia games using their service is really awesome. I have done a sponsored video in the past with them, but this video is not sponsored by Trivia Maker. But you can create your own baby Jeopardy game, assign different categories that have to do with babies, assign points, and divide your guests into teams and they can play baby Jeopardy together. Baby shower game idea number three is, do you guys remember Price is Right? Here it comes from the pub. Oh my goodness, is that even still around? Is that still a thing? I grew up watching Price is Right. Assign different baby items. Go ahead, have them on your Zoom call and then ask people to guess the price of them. It's really easy and a lot of fun and the prices may surprise you. I like to also tell what store they came from because you know some stores are more expensive than others. Baby shower game idea number four is called mommy or daddy. Pose questions to your guest such as who will be the first to change the diaper? Mommy or daddy? daddy and then your players have to guess who changed the first baby's diaper was it mommy or was it daddy in the case of my of both my children my husband actually changed both kids diapers first while I was in the hospital how cool is that but you have a whole series of questions that you ask both parents and then you talk to the parents beforehand and get the answers and then whoever gets the most most correctly whether you know mommy versus daddy wins the game idea number five is baby bingo this works great if you are going to be opening gifts on camera for your baby shower. So say you've already asked all of your guests to send in gifts to your home and you will be opening, doing a live gift unboxing on your Zoom call. You'll need to email a bingo sheet out to your guest that has different things like diapers, wipes, baby shampoo, you know, different commonly gifted items at a baby shower. And then as the mother and father open up their baby gifts, players will check off which gifts they see and whoever gets bingo first is the winner. Idea number six is a game called Who Can Finish Mom's Phrase? Remember how there, there are always these famous phrases, commonly heard phrases that we hear our mothers say? Read off the phrase and have your players guess the end of the phrase and whoever gets the most correct wins the game. Right. Game number seven is Zoomed In Baby Edition. This is the game where you show a picture of just a tiny portion of a picture and then have your players guess what the object is and as they get it incorrect then you expand out and show larger portions of the picture until someone is able to guess the, guess the picture correctly. You could do this with all baby items. If you're wondering how to do this, I do have a whole video on how to create your own zoomed in game. I will put it in the cards right up here as well as in the description box for you to check out after this video. Game idea number eight is Scategories Baby Edition. Create categories that have to do with babies, such as items you would use on a baby's bum, <laughs> or items you would use to feed a baby, or names of baby food. Then players would name items under each category. I will place the rules to category in the description box down below for further instructions. Game idea number nine is called Name That Storybook. Go ahead and pick out, I don't know, five of your favorite childhood storybooks and create a one sentence phrase that describes the whole book without saying the title of the book or the characters in it. So for example, a book about a little girl who tries different 
chairs and eats some food that doesn't belong to her. <laughs> what storybook is that? So come up with like five books that you describe very vaguely and then have your players guess what the, the storybook is. The harder you make it, the, the funnier it'll be. And whoever guesses the most books correctly wins the game. Idea number 10 is called Guess the Diaper Brand. <laughs> As moms, we all know there are so many different brands of diapers out there, but can we recognize what brand it is just by holding it up in front of a screen? That is the question. It is many varieties of diapers that you, that you can, and then you can just gift the diapers to the mother and father of the baby when you are done playing the game, and they will be ever so thankful for so many diapers. So just hold the diaper up on the screen and see if your players can guess what brand it is by how it looks. Make sure if it does, if it has the brand name on it, make sure you cover that part up, and whoever gets the most correctly wins the game. All right, you guys having fun? Are you still having fun? <laughs> I'm having fun. All right, this next game was because I was getting some questions. It was the beginning of the school year and I knew that new students were gonna be hopping online with their teachers, new teachers on Zoom. So what's the best kind of game for a new class? Icebreakers, you guessed that correctly. I know you did, I know you got that. The first idea is to create a virtual handshake. Handshakes are important. Do you remember seeing floating around Facebook where teachers would post a sign beside their classroom door and students could choose whether they wanted to fist bump their teacher, high five, give a hug, or a handshake, how they wanted to greet their teacher as they came through the door. We need some sort of virtual handshake so that we can still connect with our students. I know it's weird not being able to physically shake a hand these days. So let's try and create some sense of normalcy through a virtual handshake. This is also helpful because a lot of Zoom calls and Zoom classes begin with everybody muted, rightly as it should be when you are working with children. <laughs> everybody should be muted to begin with. So you need a, a visual way for students to greet one another and students to greet one of you when they jump on the call. So it could be as simple as everybody giving the heart sign when they jump on the call, throw in the peace sign, a series of hand motions. Yes, I just did rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Or it could even be a unique dance. Should I dance for you? A unique dance, right? <laughs> Any motion, but work with your class together so that everybody, all of your students can help come up with the virtual handshake together or you as a teacher could just mandate what it is at the beginning and then add on to it as the school year goes along. First icebreaker game idea I have for you is called This or That. Many students will be getting to know each other for the first time online in your virtual class and you as a teacher may also be just now meeting students. So you need a game that will help everybody kind of know a little bit about each other and kind of break the ice, as they say. Who says that? Who says break the ice? The way that you play this or that is you give kids two options and they have to choose which option they like best. This game can be played with everybody at the same time. You don't need to just ask one student at a time. Everybody can play at the same time. If you prefer option A, everybody raise your hand. If you prefer option B, everybody touch your nose. For example, Nike or Adidas. And then students could raise their hand for Nike, touch their nose for Adidas. Burgers or chicken? Morning person or night owl? The next icebreaker game is called One Word Nickname. Ask kids to choose only one positive word that describes themselves. For example, if I was asked to share one positive word about myself, I would say eyes. I love my eyes. And that is a tree frog. Do you hear it barking? I would choose eyes because I am known for my blue eyes. But students could also name like kind or compassionate, funny, laughs. After all the students 
have shared their one positive word. Teacher, you need to be writing these down. You need to be taking notes, have a class roster in front of you, and be writing all of your students' word down. And then let your kids know for the, that for the rest of this class period, you will be referring to them by their one positive word. The next icebreaker suggestion is to play Would You Rather? Would you rather, and you have an option A or an option B, usually these are very, very silly and get a ton of laughter. I have three, I think. Would you rather games that you can just use the screen share feature on Zoom and play along with your students, or you can share straight from YouTube and play along with your students. It'd be a great plug and play kind of game. I will post a link to my Would You Rather playlist in the description box down below. If my eyes are a little red, I just got through choking on my chai tea. The next icebreaker game is called Commonalities. This game is great for students to share and find out what things they have in common with other students in their class, but there is little to no risk of what they need to share. So they don't have to share something really deep and really personal. It can be very difficult for a child to talk on Zoom in front of their classmates in person, let alone online. Even more difficult to share something unique about themselves to a group of strangers. So we wanna take that riskiness and that vulnerability out out of this game. This game also allows kids to find commonalities with, with one another without having to think too hard. So they won't have to sit there and think of anything really deep or take too much time thinking. It should come easy. Teachers, you will give your students a prompt and students will touch their nose if your statement aligns with what they believe. So for example, teacher, you would say, touch your nose if you love wearing sneakers. I don't. Touch your nose if you would prefer to be in school learning rather than virtually online. Touch your nose if you have a sibling. All right, you get the idea. You get the idea, commonalities. This next idea is a get to know you activity that's a little more in depth than a traditional icebreaker game. This activity is called finish the sentence. You could have students play this two different ways. You could have them answer the question out loud to the group. So you'd have to have students take turns answering out loud. Or if you don't have a lot of time, you could ask students to answer the sentence using the chat box feature where every student would write down their answer in the chat box. So an example of a, of a finish in the sentence would be the best first day of school I ever had was and then students would type in their short answer in the chat box or answer back to you in person or virtually, not in person. Virtually in person? Is that, is that a thing, virtually in person? Another example of a sentence would be, what I miss most about before the pandemic is, the next activity is called Frankenstein Drawing. This will get your kids laughing. So if you need a, an activity to kind of pump up the energy and have a good positive mood for your class, this is the game. Instruct students to pull out a sheet of paper and a writing utensil, and they are going to close their eyes through the entire writing activity. Now, teacher, you are going to give verbal instructions to your students. For example, you're going to tell them, draw a head. Now remember, students' eyes are closed and they are drawing with their eyes closed. Then you would say, draw a body. So you'll go through the different major portions of Frankenstein's body, and then at the end, everybody will hold their sheet of paper up and laugh and joke and see what everybody drew. All right, this next activity is an icebreaker game and is perfect for those kids that have an Instagram account. So older kids, high schoolers, possibly middle schoolers. This game is called Instagram Story. So you're going to need to do a little stalking. <laughs> yes, I said stalking. You're going to need to do a little stalking of your student's Instagram account. So if you're willing to take the time, then this could be a great game. Maybe this game would be better for church youth groups than it would be for middle and high school teachers. That is for you to decide. Pick one picture from the student's Instagram account. Use your discretion. Don't pick something that looks embarrassing. You know, it could be um, maybe it's a background or a picture of the family. Pick something that is friendly and kind of mild and low-key that won't embarrass your students. For this icebreaker, share your screen 
screen and pop up one student's Instagram picture at a time and ask them to explain what is happening in this picture. This is an excellent opportunity for the other students in the class to see a brief snippet of what goes on in the student's life. It gives them an opportunity to tell a story about maybe how their summer went or what's happening presently in their life. If done correctly, this is a great way to really get in deep with knowing your students. Next. The next icebreaker is called Deep Thoughts. Now, is this game really deep? It's not gonna get you to know your students that well. It's just going to get them to think deeply in a funny way. <laughs> so if that's the kind of icebreaker you're looking for, then this game might be for you. So you're gonna ask really strange questions such as, is a Pop-Tart a ravioli? Is it? Is it? It kind of could be, right? It kind of could be. Is cereal soup? Is it? Is cereal soup? I mean, we eat it with a spoon, right? We eat it with a spoon. Some other examples are, is water wet? Does a straw have one hole or two? Is cheesecake pie? Could be. Could be. Did I come up with this game on my own? I found it in a youth ministry Facebook group and I thought it was brilliant and funny and wanted to share it all with you. All right, another fun uh, icebreaker game that not necessarily is going to get you to know your students better, but is a lot of fun to play is called Fast Five. Give them 10 seconds to come up with five things under a category. Could be movies with animals as the main character, five methods of transportation, five types of flowers, five brands of sneakers. You get the idea. Quickly and fast, think of five things in 10 seconds. The next quick icebreaker type of game that is surface level, but fun and gets people laughing is called Top Three. This kind of goes along with the previous game, but this time you name as quickly as you can top three things in specific categories. For example, what are your top three favorite YouTube channels? What are your top three condiments to put on a hamburger? What are your top three favorite things to do in the summer? <laughs> now, about this time, I started getting some questions for, hey, most of your games seem to be geared towards elementary school age children all the way through adults. What about the preschoolers? So I accepted your challenge. I have a three-year-old at home and I know it's hard to keep their attention here at home, much less on Zoom. Let's get into today's video. Here we go. All right, for the first game, you are gonna need some flashcards, alphabet flashcards. I mean, we all have these, right? These are standard. This is a brand new pack. Oh my goodness, I can't even get in it. <laughs> a brand new bag of flashcards. I thought we'd start the, the school year with my three-year-old with a brand new pack of flashcards. Everything that I use in this video, if there's anything, books or flashcards or whatever, I will put in the description box down below just in case you're also looking for that same thing. All right, you're simply gonna do and name that letter on flashcards, yes. A is for Apple. <laughs> If you do flashcards in person, you can do them over Zoom. They're easy to show. They're bright and colorful. Look at the little penguin. Look at the little penguin. P is for penguin. P is for penguin. Why am I talking? All right, do you guys remember playing Hangman? That is an awful game. You guys, why did we play Hangman growing up? I mean, I'm not even gonna get into what I wanna say. So we don't wanna play Hangman anymore because it's not friendly to all people. We're gonna play mouse and cheese. And I found this idea on Write Ideas with Susan. I'll post her YouTube channel down below because she gives all the instructions. But basically, you have a mouse who needs to go up some stairs and find his little get to get his cheese. <laughs> You can play this using the whiteboard feature on Zoom. Simply draw your stairs, have your little mouse and your cheese, and you can use the shape tools to be the marker of the mouse going up. You can use the draw tools to draw the letters of the sight word. Have kids guess a letter, and as they guess a letter correctly, you put it in onto the lines and move the cheese closer to the mouse. And as they get letters correct, then they win. So this is great if you have multiple players, every player takes a turn, of course, you know, longer words take longer times, shorter words take a shorter time to guess and figure out, but it's great one-on-one -on -one game as well as an all class game. <laughs> the next game I have for you is called Color Scavenger Hunt. So you're gonna need a book 
that teaches kids about colors. I had several on in our home bookshelf, so hopefully you have one too. If you're a preschool teacher, you definitely have plenty of these books. This one I picked up is just the Eric Carl My First Busy Book. This one is great, it has shapes, so you can play this game with shapes. It doesn't have to be colors or numbers or whatever you have. But we're gonna just play with shapes. You would say, um, what colors do you see? Can you name them? So you read the book, point to a color, and then have your kid go find something yellow. And it teaches them colors. So say, hey, I need you to go find something yellow in your room that you are zooming in and bring it back and let's show the class what's something yellow. Easy peasy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's not a thing. That's not a song, Sean. That's not a song. The next game is called Picnic Peekaboo Animal Version. <laughs> I'm super excited about this one because I created it myself. <laughs> that was obnoxious. I'm sorry. Show this picture right here and say, all right, you guys, can anybody guess what animal is hiding behind the picnic basket? I want to say picnic basket because of, um, what was that, Yogi Bear and Boo Boo? I'm going to find a picnic basket, Boo Boo. That was the worst impression of Yogi Bear ever. And I do have this for purchase for super cheap over on my website. I will link it in the comment section down below. I also have a free version of this game, but it involves food rather than animals. So if you want to play Picnic Peekaboo food version, check that out. And you can use the screen share feature for this game on Zoom to have everybody play together. The next game is a icebreaker. I previously did a whole video on icebreakers. Basically an icebreaker is a simple game that helps players get to know one, each, one another better, which really is <laughs> the whole purpose of this channel, to get people to know each other better through fun and games. This game is called Commonalities. You don't need any special tools or features of Zoom. You just need your finger and your nose. <laughs> Why am I cracking myself up today? I don't know. This is great for kids who don't know each other. Maybe this is their first class together. They're looking for things they have in common with other children, but you want a short, quick, simple, easy game to accomplish that in. So teacher, you're gonna give them a prompt and students, if they agree with the prompt, they will simply touch their nose and then they can look around all their other classmates on Zoom and see who else also has the same choice. You can say, who here loves puppies? I don't know why I'm beating myself in the nose with my finger, but it's probably because I love puppies. <laughs> you can say, who here loves sneakers? <laughs> the next game is called Frankenstein Drawing. You're gonna need to ask your kids to close their eyes. You're gonna need a piece of paper and a pencil. Teachers or parents, you're going to instruct your kids to draw a head, and they have to do it closing their eyes. And then draw a body, and they have to do it closing their eyes. And then feet, arms, nose, mouth, you know, all the basic body parts. <laughs> Tell everybody will show their picture at the same time, and a Frankenstein drawing. Yeah, there's really no, there's no competition. There's no learning. This is just a fun, simple, laugh out loud game. Another game idea is to play this or that. Did I put sound effects in there? I hope I did. I hope I went and had a sound effect and had another sound effect. Hopefully that happens. For this or that, the class can play all at the same time. Prompt students with a choice and they have to choose one or the other. So you're going to need to assign two different motions. You could say if you agree with option A, put your hand on your head. If you agree with option B, pull your ear. I don't know. Make up some motion. So here's an example. Nike or Adidas. I'm gonna go with Adidas on this one. <laughs> Although I do like my Air Force Ones. Burgers or chicken. Neither. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> what is going on with me today? I am feeling very sassy. I apologize. The next game is build a story. You're gonna need your screen share feature again on Zoom and do a little prep work ahead of time. Go to unsplash.com. This is my favorite, favorite website for downloading free images. You can type in any image you want. You could type in a picture of an owl. You could type in a picture of a child. You could type in a picture of a building and it will give you a free image. Download that to your desktop. Go ahead and click, open that document up, screen share it. Have as many pictures as you have participants on your Zoom call. Okay, so if you have 10 kids, have 10 different 
pictures. Let's show the first picture and have the kid say one sentence of a storyline about that picture. Next kid will add on to the story in one sentence. So you're working together as a team to build a story. Now I know preschoolers, they get a little rambly. They may stop and have a difficult time. That's okay. You can, you can skip ahead and come back to them later. Give them a little extra time. Maybe put some silly, goofy pictures in the mix so that they have fun building a story. I guess their little imaginations. The next game is called, Where Am I? Well, right now, I'm in my office filming my Zoom videos by using the Change Your Virtual Background feature on Zoom. I can be anywhere in the world. I can be a Disney world. Why am I singing that? I don't know, I'm sorry. You can literally put whatever virtual screen you want. Use the unsplash.com that I talked about in the last game to download some cool images of different places that maybe the kids know. You can even use pictures of your local, local town, you know, your local ice cream shop, your local toy store, your local hangout that maybe kids are missing. And they can guess where are you. Helps them learn about their town and about where they are located. Geography, it's a fun game. The next game is called Animal Movement. What is this supposed to be? It could be a bird. I could be a snake. This is a game that gets kids moving. It gets them up out of their seats, helps them learn different sounds, different movements to animals, maybe animals they didn't know. Before the class even begins, before you even get on your Zoom call, make a list of 10 to 20 animals. And that way you are ready to play this game. When you have all of your players on your Zoom call, you will call the name of an animal, and all the kids have to act like the animal. Whatever animal this is, I don't know. It just gets kids laughing and moving out of their seats. All right, I have another game for you that gets kids moving and up and exercising. It's called Roll the Dice, Let's Get Moving. Yes, I've talked about this one. Actually, I've talked about a lot of these in other games, but I thought I would narrow down the focus of all these games to give you some preschool ones. You're gonna need one dice and this image right here that I found on Pinterest. As you roll a die, you will show the number and the kids have to do the exercise that is on this little Pinterest post right here. So just screen share this, like just, just screen share this image right here in the Zoom app, app and have a die and you are all set with this game. The next activity, this is a learning activity. I know that you probably have worksheets and printables at, in your classroom or at your home that you love doing with kids. And you're wondering, how can I do this on Zoom? I have a beloved worksheet that's a game or a learning exercise and I don't, I wanna play with them on Zoom, but I don't wanna physically like hold the paper up in front of the screen. So what you can do, I have a whole cute little workbook here this is for ages two plus, play smart, brain boosters. Again, I will post the link where I purchased this in the description box down before. As you can see, we have not used it yet because I'm starting virtual learning with my three-year-old next week. Scan your PDF, your worksheet, whatever it is, into your computer, and then use the screen share feature to interact with that worksheet, that PDF within Zoom. Now, I have a whole entire video on how to make a PDF interactive, so I'm not gonna explain here how to fill out the worksheet using, you only need two tools. Um, you only need the screen share feature and the annotate tools feature in Zoom to do that. So, but I want you to watch this other video because I do a much better job of explaining this activity in that video. And the last game is called Draw It. Yes, I feel like I'm just constantly harping about Draw It. Put a paper plate on top of your head and tell kids to draw something with a pencil and a paper plate on top of your head. If you don't have paper plates, a piece of paper works just as well. <laughs> Whoever draws the Mickey Mouse the best when they pull it down is the winner of the game. Yes, preschoolers can do this. Preschoolers love this. I know my two-year-old loves this game and people's drawings look ridiculous. It's fun, it's silly. It's you guys are still asking for Zoom games and by this time, my mind is blown away that you all are loving my games and I am loving coming up with them. So here are 15 additional Zoom games for kids. The first game, the title may seem like you know what I'm gonna talk about but there's a twist to it. <laughs> the first game is called Guess Who. Of course you can play the traditional Guess Who 
board game like this right here, but this version of Guess Who has a twist. This game is perfect for a large class on Zoom where you have all of your tiles and you can see everybody. If you don't know how to do this, it's through gallery view. I have a tutorial on how to display everybody on your Zoom call on your desktop in one gallery view. I will post a link to that video in the description box down below. So the grid of students is like your board game on Guess Who. You as a teacher, you're going to think of one student in your class and maybe write their name down on a piece of paper. Students will then ask yes or no questions to eliminate and see whose name you have written down on the piece of paper. The first student to guess which classmate is written down on your piece of paper is the winner. But remember, students can only ask yes or no questions to the teacher. Game number two is called the Minnie Mouse Game. To play this game, you will use the whiteboard feature, the drawing tools, and you will need one die per person. Here you will see me drawing Minnie Mouse on the whiteboard feature, and you'll see different numbers for the different parts of Minnie Mouse. On the count of go, students will roll their individual die, and as they roll in order, they will create their Minnie Mouse, and the first person to create Minnie Mouse is the winner. The next game is called ABC Scavenger Hunt. Now, I found this on <laughs> the Dixie Cups website. If I can find it again, I will post it in the link below because they had a lot of really cute games. Who would have thought that Dixie Cups would have games and also food recipes on their website? Players will also need scissors, a marker, and a paper plate. Using the markers, write the alphabet around the edge of each plate. Using the scissors, make a small cut on either side of each letter to form a tab. Write each player's name on the center of the plate. Players can decorate the plates if they want to. So the way that you adapt this to Zoom is once your students have created their game board, they will look around their space and bring something to their desk that starts with the letter of each alphabet. And whoever finds objects for all of the letters in the alphabet first wins the game. So first player to find all 26 letters of the alphabet all right, this next game is called Day in Review. This game will be great at the end of the class period, at the end of your virtual distance learning class period, your end of your homeschool day, or you just wanna check in with your grandkids and see how their school day went. This is the game for that. One person chooses a letter, then going around the Zoom squares of faces, each person describes their day in one word that is the next letter that the first person chose. Does that make sense? One person chooses a letter. Then you're going to go around and everybody gets a turn that is on the Zoom call. Each player will then describe their day without using the letter that the first person chose. So this seems a lot harder than it sounds. Or is it the opposite? Does it sound too hard? <laughs> it's a lot easier than it sounds. Okay, so say the first person chooses S. Well, then you have to, all the other players have to describe their day with a word that doesn't begin with S or words that don't begin with S. So you can't say, my day was super fantastic. And I would lose the game because I use the word super, which begins with the letter S, which the first player identified as the letter we were avoiding. You could say something like, I had a awesome day of class instead of school, right? <laughs> I almost I almost lost my own game. This is a great game to test your vocabulary skills. The next game is a memory game. You're gonna begin by stating a sentence, and then each person after you has to state the same sentence and then add on to it. So for example, I went to the park and saw an alligator. The next person would then add, I went to the park and saw an alligator while fishing <laughs> and then the next person would add on to that sentence and it really test your memory skills to see if you can remember what everybody said so whoever is at the end of this game has the most difficult time the first person to forget part of the sentence loses the game the next game is called mystery bag Ooh, mystery bag meeting, prepare a mystery bag, put something mysterious on the inside of it, 
And then to play this game, you will give clues and students have to guess what is in the bag. It would even be fun. You could also turn this into a little party of sorts by asking every student to come to the Zoom call with their own mystery bag with a mystery object on the inside. So the next game is called Roll a Rainbow. Why did I sing that? That was really weird. To play Roll a Rainbow, every player is going to need die. One, one singular die, a piece of paper, and some color pencils, crayons, markers, colorful rainbow colors. Set a timer for one minute and see who can build their rainbow first. I love rainbows. Who here loves rainbows? Give me a little rainbow emoji down in the comment section if you also love rainbows. The next game is a traditional word search. You may say, Sean, that sounds a little boring, but I am sure you have a favorite word search, worksheet, PDF, book that you absolutely love, that your kids love, and you're like, I wish I could use this in my virtual classroom, but I can't. Yes, you can, you can. Did you know that you can take any PDF and make it interactive on Zoom? Super cool, right? You don't have to go out and buy something new. You can just scan in a, your regular, any old word search you have laying around your house or in your teacher files, scan it in, make it digital, and pop it into Zoom. I have a tutorial all about how to make your PDF interactive so you can do a word search together with your kids. I'm gonna post a link to that tutorial right here. The next game is MASH. Do you remember this? We always played this at slumber parties when I was a kid growing up. We would play it in middle school, like during homeroom started, we would play MASH. MASH is a super easy game to play on Zoom. So if you're looking for birthday party ideas while you're here, MASH is a great one to do that. If you're looking for a throwback game, MASH is a great game to do that. I found this little printable here free on Pinterest. I'll post a link to it down below. And you just simply follow the instructions. I'm going to refer back to the video I created on how to make any PDF interactive on Zoom because you're going to need to know those tools in order to play MASH on Zoom. The next game idea is a silly name game. I know you've seen these these pop up on Facebook all the time. I found this really cute penguin one on preschoolpop.com. I will leave them linked below. It is absolutely adorable, but there are tons of these free ones all over Pinterest of varying themes, but simply play this silly game online, come up with your own silly penguin name, and have fun being silly on Zoom together. The next game is called Number Out, and it is similar to how you would play Four Corners, except you're going to write numbers down on scraps of paper and every student will need their own scraps of paper with numbers on them. So instead of moving corners around the room, students will hold up pieces of paper. Have students cut or tear a paper and write the numbers one through six on each one of them. Each round, students will choose to hold up one number. The teacher will roll a die and the students holding up that number are out. They are eliminated. They are gone. Continue playing until only one player remains. And of course that person is the winner. This next idea I have talked about before, I have a separate video on, but I have a new way of playing it zoomed in. Yes, I have given you multiple ways to play this game before. I will link the other ways to play it in the description box down below, but I have a new way. I have a new way to play zoomed in that I think you're going to like. When playing zoomed in, you begin by looking at images that are magnified or zoomed in very close. Collect and save several images prior to your virtual meeting. You all know I love sending you to unsplash.com to find these free images. Before you start the meeting, also open up the images in preview. This is very important. Before you start your meeting, go ahead and have your images opened up. Preview is great to use because you can easily zoom in and out using the magnifying glass icon. So when you're ready to play, all you do is share your screen so everyone can see the image. And at first, you only see a portion of the image. And as players get guessed incorrectly, you slowly zoom out using that little magnifying glass. All right, did you like that one? Did you like that version of Zoomed In? Let me know in the comment section down below if you did. The next game is called Name, Place, Animal, Thing. That sounds like, um, what is it? Gorillas, bears, monsters, oh my. No, that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. From The Wizard of Oz. Bears, lions, tigers, oh my. Tigers, lions, bears, oh my. Is that it? <laughs> 
No, this is name, place, animal, thing. This game is great for older kids. So to play, pick a letter. Any letter, there's 26 letters in the English alphabet, pick a letter. Each student has to list a famous person's name, a place, an animal, and a thing that all begin with the one letter that you picked. The first person to type all of those things into the chat is the winner. Easy peasy, lemon squeaky. Another game that I love to play is Connect Four. You guys love this game? I love the traditional board game Connect Four. Man, there's nothing like getting that satisfaction when you get four in a row and you're horizontal, diagonally, vertically, any way about it. Man, I love, we used to play this all the time as a kid. This is super easy to play on Zoom. You're going to need a free printable like this one here that I found on Pinterest. Go ahead and share your screen on Zoom and then simply use these shape tools as your pieces. So this is a great one-on-one -on -one player. So only two people can play at a time. Choose, one person chooses one shape, the other person chooses another shape and you play that like you would regular four in a row connect four. All right, so the last game I have for you is called Vulture and Crows. Now I'm going to explain this game fast, <laughs> but only because I'm gonna make a separate video on how to play this game that will be just about this game because it is, I feel like it is a little complicated, but I wanted to just throw it out here in this video so that you know it exists and that it's a great game to play online. This would be a good one-on-one -on -one game. This is not good for a classroom. So to play Vulture and Crows, you're going to need the whiteboard feature and the shape tools. If I have already made the video all about this game, it will be posted in the description box down below. If it's not there, that means it's coming. You need a game board that looks like this, like a star. You could do this one of two ways. You could draw this game easily on the whiteboard feature within Zoom, or I have a free printable that I will post in the description box down below that you could use through the screen share feature in Zoom. You're going to need seven crows. So basically seven shapes using the shape tool. You're gonna to need one vulture. So your crows and your vulture need to have two different shapes. And then of course you need two players. The crow's objective is to block the vulture from moving. The vulture's objective is to capture four crows by jumping them. So crows begin the game. Place one shape on any space. The vulture plays his shape on any open spot. Next, the crows place their a second shape on any empty spot. Now be sure to prevent the vulture from jumping and capturing you. Now the vulture starts to move, so you know what that means. The hunt is on. The vulture is after the crows. The vulture can move to any open and, ad and adjacent spot in a straight line only. Crows must continue to fly into open spots one by one until all crows are on the board. The vulture continues to hunt, looking for a way to jump and capture a crow. Once all seven crows have settled on the board, players begin moving a shape on each turn. Now crows move in the same manner as a vulture. However, crows are not allowed to jump over any other shape. So I really hope you guys are enjoying this. Let me know in the comment section down below. Click that sub subscribe button if you want to see more. This will be my longest video. Most of my videos are eight, mm, five to 12 minutes. <laughs> they are not this long. I hope you're finding some great ideas. Here are nine more Zoom games for all ages that you've never played on Zoom before. The first game is called What Movie Am I In? Now I found this game over on Trix TV. Is that the name? Yes. All you're going to need to know how to do for this game is how to change your virtual background in Zoom. If you don't know how to change your virtual background in Zoom, I have an easy tutorial that you can watch right here to learn how to do that. But go ahead and load some scenes from your favorite movies into your virtual background. Have all your players come to your Zoom game night, your Zoom happy hour, your Zoom party. <laughs> That was weird. Was that cringy?
that was cringy, with some images of their favorite movies. And then to play the game, you simply change your virtual background and ask players, what movie am I in? They can type their responses in the chat or call them out loud. And whoever gets the most correct wins the game. Let's play this game. What movie is this? They just came out with a TV show that I have been binge watching on Netflix. It is hilarious. If you are an 80s kid like I am, you will know what movie this is, and hopefully you will be watching the Netflix series that follows up to this movie. Let me know if you have been watching Cobra Kai, <laughs> and also if you like Stingray. It's Stingray. Oh my goodness, Stingray is hilarious. Game number two is called Bring Your Purse, <laughs> or your man bag. computer, laptop, or your backpack. You could play this with a variety of structures. That's not the right word I'm looking for. You could play this with a variety of bags, <laughs> depending on your audience. But I'm gonna call this bring your purse just because. Everyone comes to the Zoom call with their purse or their partner's purse. The Zoom host will then give a scenario like aliens take over the world, there's a worldwide pandemic, oh wait, that's already happening. Bigfoot is on a playground with the kids. <laughs> And then players will take turns pulling three objects out of their purse and sharing why those objects would be most useful. This game is best played if players don't know they're going to be playing this game. Just tell them to bring their purse or their partner's purse and then they can pull things out, random things that go along with the scenario that you pose. Everyone is a winner in this game. It's sure to get a lot of laughs and some insight into every person or the person's partner based on what is in their purse. Game number three is called Find the Letter. The Zoom host will call out one letter of the alphabet and then slowly show the room that they're in. So like right now I would call out the letter B and then I would show you on my phone by moving my phone around the room, I would show you the space that I am. As I slowly pan around the room, all the players will write down as many things that they see that begin with the letter B. Whoever comes up with the most objects in the room that begin with the letter B wins the game. And of course you can play this with any letter of the alphabet or in any language. Game number four is called Baby Picture. I We used to play this in youth group at my church all the time. I'm pretty sure we played this back in middle school, that the teachers would all play this and you had to guess whose baby picture matched up with which teacher. And in youth group, we would play which of our peers matched up with their baby picture. It was a lot of fun, but we did it old school on a bulletin board. <laughs> You had to bring in a baby picture and then they would staple it onto a bulletin board and everybody would write down and guess which baby belonged to which teacher or which baby belonged to which student. It was a lot of fun. So this would be super easy to play on Zoom. Ahead of your Zoom meeting, have all of your players send you, email you a picture of themselves when they were a baby. So only the Zoom host will know which people belong to which baby pictures. And then at the party, show the baby pictures up. Everybody writes down who they think think is which baby and whoever guesses the most correctly wins the game. This would also be a really great baby shower game. And if you're looking for some more baby shower games, I do have a video dedicated to baby shower games. I'll post it in the description box down below if that is something that interests you. <laughs> game number five, I enlisted the help of some friends. Thank you, Amanda, Miranda, and Jennifer. Have players before your Zoom call submit two pictures to you by email. One picture of them where wearing their face mask, the second picture of them not wearing a face mask. And then you would use your screen share feature on Zoom, or you could create your own little video as well, but you would share your screen of the picture of the person wearing the mask, and all the players have to type in the chat whether they think the person is smiling, frowning, or smirking. <laughs> type that in the chat, and once everybody has submitted their answers, then the Zoom host will show the picture of the person without the mask and see whether who got it correct. And the player who guesses the most masked, unmasked faces correctly wins the game. This is a lot of fun to get everybody involved in your Zoom meeting. Game number six is called blind drawing. Everybody will need a piece of paper and a writing utensil. The Zoom host will bring one object and put it in front of the camera. All of the players will look at the object and then for about 10, 15 seconds, everybody will close their eyes and attempt to draw their object on the paper with their 
their eyes closed and whoever draws the most accurate picture of the object wins the game. Game number seven is called Apple Tree. And I found this on Pinterest somewhere, I think, but this is another version of Hangman. Now, if you remember, I talked in a previous Zoom video of mine about a mouse and a cheese <laughs> version of Hangman that is a little more PC, a little more friendly to all people than traditional Hangman. We need, we need to just get rid of Hangman. Let's play this Apple version or let's play mouse and cheese version, right? Am I correct? Yes, okay. One person thinks of a word and draws dashes on the whiteboard feature in Zoom to represent each letter in the word. Above the dashes, the player will draw a tree with seven apples. Now all the players take turns guessing one letter at a time. If the letter is in the word, the first person fills in the blank. If not, the incorrect letter is written inside one of the apples. If the person guesses the word before all the apples are filled, that person wins. If not, well, they lose and somebody else wins. Game number eight is called Memory Coins. Who doesn't love a good memory game? Test your memory. See how well your brain is working. I said brain funny. I kind of said brain like brains, like zombie brains or something. That was weird. <laughs> You're going to line up a number of coins, pick five to 10 coins, random, different coins, shapes, sizes, amounts, different coins. You could even start with three and work up to 10 based on the ages of your players. Place the coins on your table in a ra random pattern, random order. Have all the players stare at the coins for about 10, 15 seconds. And then the Zoom host will turn off their video feed and remove all of the coins and then turn the video feed back on. Players will then type in the chat the correct coins and what order they were in in the chat and whoever gets it correctly is the winner. Now to play this game, I'm sure you're wondering, well, how do I get my camera to see the coins on the table? I have a video that shows how to set up a top-down view using your cell phone, a couple of cans of food, and a box of macaroni. I will post a link to that video in the description box down below. We are down to the very last game. If you have been enjoying this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to my channel because I post Zoom games every week. For game number nine, I'm just gonna play it and you guys follow along. Take a good look at what I'm wearing. I have changed one thing about my appearance. I could have removed something. I definitely changed something about my appearance. If you know what that something is, please let me know in the comment section down below. Don't cheat, don't rewind. Well, I guess you could. You could rewind <laughs> and see what I changed, but see if you can guess on the first try, what is it that I changed about my appearance? That is the game. <laughs> Zoom players will have them look a certain way. They could add something to their appearance, take something away, turn the video feed off when they make the appearance change and turn it back on and players have to guess what is changed by typing their answer into the chat. And if you didn't already guess, all I did was tuck my hair behind my ears. That was my appearance change. All right, and our last video, I thought I would end it with just for adults. So if your kids stop watching this part, this is just for adults if you're looking for games. Because I'm gonna have new content coming up for all the new holidays. And I hope you guys still wanna see Zoom games. I also post social distancing games as well as in-person game ideas that I play with my family. The first game idea I have for you is called Zombie Apocalypse. 2020 kind of feels like zombie apocalypse or aliens have taken over the world or we're living in another dimension. <laughs> Kind of been a strange year, right? The Zoom host is going to choose five random objects. Bring those objects to your Zoom meeting and you're going to give the other players, the other people on your Zoom call, a scenario like zombie apocalypse. Players then have to name which of the five items that you brought would be most useful in a zombie apocalypse. And they also have to share why they think it would be most useful. Now, other scenarios that you could have for this game are like, Bigfoot gets on a city bus. You're going to a family reunion where you don't like anybody. Or you're surrounded by sharks on an itty bitty boat. Make up a scenario. I'm sure you all are very creative people. The next game is called Two Truths and a Lie. The night before your Zoom meeting, 
gather two truths and one lie from all the people that are going to be on the meeting. Now they don't have to let you know which things are the truths and which is the lie. It could be a mystery to you as well as the host, but make sure that you have two truths and a lie from every player that's gonna be on your Zoom call. Now these should be silly things. They don't have to be work related. It could be something about your personal life that nobody else would know about. Then once you are on your Zoom call, you will read each of the players, two truths and a lie, and everybody in the group will decide which one is the lie. You could have them write in the chat which of these statements is the lie, and whoever guesses it correctly, it gets a point. So you do this for every player on the call, and whoever has the most points after everybody has shared their two truths and a lie is the winner. Right now, I'm gonna give you two truths and a lie, and you let me know in the comment section which one is the lie. One, I have a cat named Fluffy. Two, I have eaten monkey brains in Africa. And three, I went zip lining in New Zealand. Let me know which one's the lie down below. If you guessed correctly, I will give you a gold star. Game number two is where are you? Tell your Zoom participants ahead of your Zoom call to come prepared with a picture already loaded into their virtual background settings on Zoom. And the picture needs to be of some place in their current city. It could be a famous place, it could be a local place, restaurant, uh, nature thing, something a little bit recognizable, not too hard, but hard enough to guess what it is. This is a great game if you are playing with people that you don't know very well and people who are all around the country or the world. Then when you're on your Zoom call, ask one person to change their background to their city image. And then everybody will put their responses in the chat of where that city is or what that specific spot in their city is. And whoever guesses correctly gets a point. And you go through all the players on your call and whoever has guessed the most cities or virtual backgrounds correctly and has the most points wins the game. The next game is called Personal Scavenger Hunt. Now we are all familiar with scavenger hunts on Zoom. I've posted quite a few on my channel, but this one has a little bit of a different twist. The Zoom host will call out descriptors of people and the people on the call, all the players on the call, then have to work together to find the person who fits the descriptor. Now the person who fits the descriptor needs to stay silent and see if the other players can guess that they fit that description. All right, I'm gonna give you an example. The youngest person. Probably nobody knows who the youngest person in the group is, so they have to work together to figure out who that person is. You could say green eyes. Now this one would be a little easier because you have a camera and you could see who has green eyes. Whoever has the green eyes should remain silent until they have been identified. And you may have more than one person fit the, these descriptions. This is just a great game to get people to know one another and see commonalities. The next game is called Hot Seat. Ooh, 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 hot seat. Ooh, ooh, hot seat. Ooh, 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 hot seat. Ooh, 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 hot seat. Where did that come from? I don't know. So ahead of your Zoom meeting, everybody submits a question. Now they don't know who is going to be asked these questions, so they just submit a random, random question. Like, how many siblings do you have? Or do you like white wine or red wine? Have you ever fallen out of your chair? <laughs> then the Zoom host, when the Zoom call begins, will pick one person at random and they have to be in the hot seat. Hot seat, ooh, ooh, hot. And the Zoom host will then ask them all of the questions from the other players. This game, of course, is great as an icebreaker. The next game is called Would You Rather. Now you can find, you can search the internet, the interwebs, Pinterest in search of some adult would you rather prompts. But if you're looking for silly prompts, I have some over on my website. I have a Halloween themed one. I have a quarantine themed 
themed would you rather uh, that you can simply take these as little videos or individual slides, plug them into a PowerPoint or Google Slides, screen share them with the players on your call so that you don't have to come up with the questions yourself. But basically, would you rather is you have a prompt and, and players have a choice of this or that and they have to decide which one they would do and then discuss why they would choose the difference. I'm gonna pop up a couple of slides from my would you rathers on my website that I will link in the description box down below if you are interested in purchasing this. The next idea is to have a trivia night. Now you can create your own silly one. I recently did a trivia night with college buddies that I got together. It was so much fun. And I created trivia questions around our college that we went to and many of us hadn't talked in years or since we graduated from college. And it was just random facts about our college, the college buildings, professors. Well, Trivia Maker, I've talked about them before. They have sponsored one video of mine, but this one is not sponsored. They have no clue that I'm still talking about them because I love them. <laughs> but you can create your own trivia based around maybe your company you could ask you know questions you could have trivia based on something all of your players have in common you could do like halloween trivia but it's just a really fun way to screen share and it's all set up for you just to make up your own questions and then it's super easy to share you can add music and it's, it's just a lot of fun. Do you like to play card games and games with spoons? Yes, I said spoons. <laughs> Extreme spoons is so much fun. Oh my goodness. Every player will need their own deck of cards and a spoon. Each player shuffles their own deck and deals themselves four cards. Now the goal is to get a four of a kind in your hand. When the game begins, players should take the top card from their own deck and either keep or discard it. If they keep it, they should discard a different card so only four remain in their hand. Now players continue in this manner until they have a four of a kind. Then they take the spoon next to them, hold it up to their nose, so other players can see it via video chat. And as soon as someone gets a four of a kind or notices someone else holding a spoon, they should grab their spoon. The last person to grab a spoon receives a letter in the word spoon, S-P-O-O-N. The first person who spells spoon is the boggle. Yes, boggle. I put boggle on here because what adult doesn't love a good word game? And a lot of people have Boggle at home, but really only one person on your Zoom call needs to have Boggle, but they will need a special setup using canned goods and a box of macaroni or pasta. <laughs> yes, that sounds ridiculous. I'm gonna link you to another video, I'll post it right here, that shows you how to set up a secondary camera where I use my phone so that I have an overview shot of the boggle board so that everybody can see when it shakes and it's just a lot easier to see the game pieces. But boggle is super easy and super fun. Everybody loves boggle. The next game is called Can You Name It? Again, another game if you love word games, love challenging word games. Over on my website, I've already put this game together and you can just simply screen share it with everybody. But basically it's words that have the word can, C-A-N, in it. <laughs> Who likes mystery and intrigue and guessing games? This one's called Wink Assassin. Yes, wink, wink, wink. <laughs> and here's how you play it. Wink Assassin is a game of guessing and acting. Put on your actor's hat. You don't need anything to play this game. Players must convince all the other players that they are not the assassin. One player is the assassin and must finish off the other players before getting caught and identified as the assassin. The assassin privately messages the victim a wink emoji. When a user gets this message, they must tragically die on screen and then turn off their video feed on the Zoom call. The players then vote who they believe the assassin is. So take turns, the assassin will continuously pick someone that they will message and after every death, then all the other players and then vote. The player with the most votes gets kicked off. The game continues until the assassin is caught. 
This next game is going to require a bit of instructions and some prep before you jump on your Zoom call. It's called a desk photo contest. This is really great for groups that are having meetings, like your company meeting is on Zoom. Before everybody jumps on the Zoom call, instruct all players, all participants, to take a flat lay of their current office desk workspace. Now, how you take a flat lay, it's super easy, is you just stand above, <laughs> be careful. You could climb a ladder. I like to stand in my desk chair. <laughs> And you just want to take your phone and hold it even over the top of your desk so that it's completely flat and you get a shot of all of your desk. Then everybody will share their pictures through screen share on Zoom and everybody will vote on whose picture is the best. Or you could say whose picture is the messiest, whose desk is the neatest, whose desk is the most unique. Hey, you could even award trophies for this game. All right, this next game, I can't play because I don't have any. <laughs> I know, I, I feel like I'm one of the few people who doesn't have one of these. Okay, what am I talking about? I'm talking about tattoos. This game is called Tattoos and Stories. Players will share a story about their tattoo and the other players have to guess whether that story is the truth or a lie. <laughs> You can take points with this game. So players that guess it correctly, whether the tattoo is a truth or a lie, if they guess that correctly, then they give themselves a point and you go through everybody and shares tattoos. Now, if you don't have a tattoo like me, maybe you share a story about a scar on you. Most people have scars. Award points to those who get the, uh, who guess that it's the truth or a lie correctly. So you might have multiple people getting points at the same time. Then whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. The next game is called Never Have I Ever. If you have, then you get a point. So it goes like this. Never have I ever eaten alligator. Now, if you have eaten alligator before, then you get a point. Yes, this works on the honor system. Everybody's gonna have to keep track of their own points. So if you have eaten alligator, give yourself a point. Then somebody else would go next. Never have I ever smoked pot. I know, I told you, I told you this was an adult video. I would not get a point because I have never done that. But if you have done that, give yourself a point. So you get the idea. You can make the never have I ever's as family friendly as you want or not family friendly at all. And whoever has the most points by the time you get around all the players wins the game. The next game is the lip sync challenge. And I'm doing a little shoulder shimmy shimmy shake because music is involved. Before the Zoom meeting, ask all of your participants, all of your players to record themselves singing along to the chorus of a song and dancing along as they sing, lip syncing. Then when everybody jumps on the call, take turns sharing the video and everybody will vote on which video is the best and that person is the winner. For this next game, every player is going to need a deck of cards. Who doesn't have a deck of cards? Everybody has a deck of cards laying around, at least one deck at my house. I'm sure we have five or six, and they probably have like unicorns and princesses and kitties all over them. I played this game as a kid. <laughs> War. You guys remember playing this game? Everybody would like quickly go through your card and slap down a card, and whoever had the highest card then got to keep both cards, and then if you put down the same card at the same time, then you'd have to battle it out with three cards, flip over the fourth card, and whoever won, whoever had the highest card, you'd get all the cards until someone runs out of the deck of their cards. Oh, I used to play this for hours and hours. So I thought this is a great game to play on Zoom with a little tweak. Every player will flip the top card and show it towards the camera. Player with the highest card gets a point. If there are matching cards with the same value, say you put two kings down, then the two people flip again and the highest card value wins the point. Go through your entire deck of cards and once you're at the end of your deck, everybody should have the same number of cards, then you see how many points you have and that person is the winner. The next game is called Drop a Hint. Now I found this game on 
party play plan, play party plan. Play. I can't ever remember the name of the website. I will link it down below. She has great ideas over on her website that has to do with party games. I love her website. So I'll link it down below. But I thought one of her games that she had listed, this one called Drop a Hint, would work great on Zoom. The object of this game is one person guesses while the other three people work together to get their teammate to guess a word each person saying one word at a time. So you're gonna divide your players into teams of three or four people, depending on how many people are on the, on the call. While one team plays, the other teams will just watch. The Zoom host will give the word of an object like castle to all the players on the team except one person, and that person is going to be the guesser. The guesser then has the, to guess the word castle only by the, the one word that the other team mates provide. So for example, say the first team player says tower. The guesser is like, okay, tower. I mean, that could be like the Eiffel Tower, that could be Legos. I mean, you could guess a bunch of things. Okay, so they, they haven't guessed castle yet. The next teammate says princess. Okay, so then the guesser goes, okay, tower, princess, uh, Rapunzel. Um, no, that's not right. So then the third teammate says building. Okay, so then they say castle. The guesser says castle and they get it correct. So then you would go to the next team and the Zoom host would provide a word for that team. You can play as many rounds as you want, but the team with the most points at the end of the game wins. We are down to the last two games. I hope you've been enjoying this video. If so, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up because it helps my channel out so much. Thank you. This game, number 19, is called Odd One Out. Before your Zoom call, create 10 to 12 lists of common things, but that have one, one thing on the list that doesn't belong. Show your first list using screen share. Then players race to type in the chat which item is the odd one out. Here is an example. All right, the final game you are going to need some kind of music playing device. You could use your phone. You could go ahead and have some music preloaded on your desktop to share on Zoom. Yes, you can share music on Zoom, or you could just play it off your phone and your, your laptop speakers will pick it out. You're going to need to get your groove on. No, mm -mm, that's, that's not it. You're going to need to get in the party spirit to play this classic game. Name that tune. Play a brief five to 10 seconds of a song and the first player to type in the chat the title of the song and the artist name wins the game. I'm never good at this game, never good. I hardly ever remember title or artist name, but I'm sure some of you out there would rock this.